Hi guys, welcome to our new series on how to be creative. This is an initiative created by our communications team. We have Ashley Epperson, our Director of Communications. She's been with the Institute since 2019, starting as an intern, moving to the Communications Department, and being promoted to Director of Communications. And next we have Katie Graybill. She's our new Communications Coordinator and we're excited to have her on our team. And then you have me, Jacob Carter. I'm the Media Productions Coordinator here at the Charter Institute at Erskine, and I'm leading this new series on Creative Communications Tips. Let me give you guys a little intro about me. I pulled out a camera out of my dad's closet when I was 10 years old. It was this massive camera that shot on full-size VHS tapes, but I loved the idea of creating silly videos with my brothers. As I grew up, I went to broadcasting class in high school and started a business degree at USC. I've always had an entrepreneurial mindset, so I started a business where I filmed high school plays, weddings, and small commercial photo shoots. I switched to media arts because I like the idea of creating media more than I like the idea of creating a big business. But to be honest, I learned more outside of the classroom than I did inside. I became an intern at a company that was owned by who are now my two best friends. We shot videos for Blue Cross Blue Shield, United Way, USC, Clemson University, Dartmouth Medical School, as well as worked on sketch comedy videos and music videos garnering hundreds of thousands of views. And during this, I was working on my own project of a full-length documentary on homelessness in Columbia, South Carolina. After graduation, I saw that being creative fulfilled my two passions in life telling stories and building relationships. I knew to make the best films possible, you need to have strong bonds with the people you're filming. You need to know them to best tell their story. So I continued to build a name for myself as a freelance filmmaker, with the wedding video business where I got to meet couples and tell their love stories. All this while living in a halfway house with a homeless ministry I was volunteering my time with. During that time, I was traveling, filming with Walmart, Quaker State Oil, and much more. I loved what I was doing, but things got even better when I met my wife. We bonded over photography because she was photographing her first wedding with a camera she just bought. I showed her how to use it and we started dating. Fast forward a year and a half later, we got married and started shooting weddings together, photos and video, and we're still doing that today. I had a few full-time positions at organizations since then, but realistically, I'm an entrepreneur at heart. I like building new opportunities for myself and others to learn to be creative. And that's what this series is all about. I'm excited that your school has chosen you to be at the forefront of the content that you're pushing out, and we're excited to join you on this journey. Now, first things first, today we're going to talk about what goes into making high quality content. Number one, you have to plan your story. No matter what kind of video you're making, you have to start with the story. All the English teachers are going to love this part. In every video, you need to introduce a subject, an inciting incident, rising action, climax, falling action, and resolution. Some of you might be saying, but Jacob, I'm filming an event, so I kind of just have to capture what happens so I can turn around a video really quickly. Yes, you can totally do that, but check out this event video. This is Berkeley Preparatory Academy's ribbon cutting video. Still to this day, one of my favorite videos. First things first, we introduce the school with these establishing shots, exposition. Then we go to a combination of Dr. Weinberg and Dr. Roach explaining what is going on and teasing some information from the governor, rising actions. Then we have the governor's speech. Most people would think cutting the ribbon is the climax, but I would argue this is. This solidifies the support for the school and charter schools and the need was recognized and fulfilled for education in this community. Then of course you have the happy kids, families, and the ribbon cutting. Falling action. So, the story matters. Start with that. The rest of these tips will be a little more practical. Second, when you're shooting, build out your frame. There's a concept in photography and videography called rule of thirds. Imagine that your frame is split by two vertical lines and two horizontal lines into nine squares. It is the most aesthetically pleasing thing if your main subject that you're trying to capture is on one of those lines or intersections. In most of my videos, I'm interviewing one of my subjects on one of these top intersections and using B-roll that will hit one of those intersections as well. You also want to fill your frame. 
One huge mistake I made when I was first starting out, my viewers couldn't really tell what my dominant subject in the frame is. If you have pieces of your frame that are too empty, you might need to get closer or zoom in to fill up your subject. And what's just as important as filling your frame, make sure you minimize distractions. Take a look at this video I shot. I didn't end up using this piece of B-roll because there are way too many distractions. So pay attention to building out your frame and include what's important and eliminate what's not important. You can help your audience focus on what they need to see. Third tip, audio is half the viewing experience. You might not have access to a super high quality microphone, but these concepts can help you adapt to certain situations. Listen to this audio Ashley shot at a PBL event at Virtus. And so tonight is a night that we actually celebrate them. So this is for all of our students. And our so as you can probably tell, it got really busy and in fact started raining. So Ashley did the right thing by stopping the interview due to the high volume of noise that was coming into her interview space and moved. Now listen to it again, but in a different location. So mental health for our children and how can we actually have better mental health, which is something that we need to focus on. Pretty big difference, right? You can make a difference by just moving your subject to a quieter space or moving your subject closer to your microphone. Fourth tip, try to work with good lighting. You don't need nice equipment to make this work. When I didn't have a light, I would film next to a window with my subject facing the window or even outside. But this can lead to road noise if you're by a busy place or have airplanes or something that can muddy your noise level. Put down their very first American Leadership Academy and... Yeah, they're doing, they're doing, we may be getting ready to go to war. I know, I'm like, should I be concerned? <laughs> I'll try it again. <laughs> But that's all part of adapting, doing the best with what you have, and being willing to learn from your mistakes. And that's what leads me to my last tip, confidence. Put your best self forward, but it's okay to fail. Now this gets interpreted weirdly, so just hear me out. There's a saying that it takes 10,000 hours to be an expert at something. So that's 40 hours a week for five years straight. And let me tell you something, I'm still learning. Even now, within the past two years at the Institute, there's been projects that I've started and not finished, projects that I put everything I had into it and someone didn't like it, but it was all part of a process of learning and growing to be better at creating high quality content for our schools. You have the same ability to set the standard for the content that you create at your school, and I'm excited to see what you're able to create out of it. So there you have it, my five tips for creating high quality content. And those are just my main basics. We're going to go over how to shoot video with your phone, the most cost-effective camera setup I found, some free alternatives to expensive editing software, and what I consider my basics of editing. Until next time, I'm Jacob Carter. Make sure you're moving the needle for your school.